Welcome back to Take 5 Friday, where we talk the people and process behind making and maintaining the U.S. diplomatic presence around the world. This week, OBO's Construction Operations Division Chief, Chris Dudding, is talking with Chuck Bone, president of BL Harvard's International Group. BL Harvard is a privately owned construction company with U.S. and international operations. Headquartered in Birmingham, Alabama, the company provides pre-construction, construction, construction, design-build, and construction management services. Chuck has been president of BL Harvard's International Group since 2011. Before serving as president, Chuck worked in numerous roles with BLHI, including general superintendent, project manager, and senior vice president of international operations. With over 30 years of construction experience, he provides leadership, oversight, and management for all of BL Harvard's international projects. Chris Dudding is a graduate of Iowa State University and has been a licensed professional engineer in the state of Iowa since 2010. As OBO's division director for construction operations, Chris oversees nearly $14 billion in active construction programs worldwide, composed of over 60 major projects. He was named as one of engineering news record Mid-Atlantic Magazine's top 20 under 40 and has received two superior honor awards and one meritorious honor award by the Department of State. We're very excited to have them both with us today. Welcome. Well, good morning, Chuck Bone uh, from BL Harvard. Uh, uh, you know me, but others may not. I'm Chris Studding. I'm the head of construction operations for uh, the Overseas Building Operations uh, Bureau and for the Department of State. And today we're just interviewing and uh, uh, just asking a few questions. Uh, Chuck, you work for BL Harvard, one of our largest contractors. And uh, uh, is that right? That's correct, Chris. But first of all, great to see you again. Um, thanks for thanks for having me. I think our first encounter was probably in Jakarta, way Pro back in Pro 2000. Probably, well. absolutely, yeah. Uh, but not my first encounter at BL Harvard. I think I was in Senegal, where I have this picture here in my back. Uh, uh, that was the yeah. Senegal New Embassy compound on the westernmost westernmost tip of Africa. Um, so. Uh, so Chuck, so let me ask you this: How did you get into international construction? Ooh, well, my, you know, I actually answered an advertisement in a newspaper. Is how I got into international construction. Back in uh, 1988, I was working on a on an air base in in Tucson, Arizona, and a buddy of mine came in and said, "Look, this company called Harvard is advertising for carpenters to work in Kwajalein in the Marshall Islands." So. I went home, asked my wife. She politely said yes, and, and the rest is history. I've been, been doing it ever since. Oh, you started as a carpenter. Yeah, that's correct. I started oh, as a wow. carpenter. I took a, oh, my goodness. Took a, a little less conventional route, I guess, through the to where I am today. Carpenters always seem to take over, I will say that. So, uh, so it sounds like that wasn't your first State Department project, though. No, it wasn't my first State Department project. Uh, my first one was in probably, I think it was 1995 in Bogota, Colombia. So I worked there back in the FBO days, um, worked on Bogota, and then from there I went to the US interest section in Havana and worked there for a little while. And then, uh, and then I got out of the embassy world up until 2000 in Tunisia, where I went to Tunisia with Harvard as the uh, project manager and have been involved you know, one way or the other in over 60 embassies and consulates located around the world since. That is amazing. That is amazing. So now this is a tough question, but what, what do you think is your biggest accomplishment in terms of this uh, construction effort overseas? Oh boy, I, you know, I'd, I'd say that our biggest accomplishment both for me and for the, for the company is actually keeping the company alive and giving opportunity to other people. You know, they, these, we go over to these foreign countries and, and we give opportunity to people that would, wouldn't have opportunity before. So I would say that is the greatest accomplishment that, that anybody can have as a, as a business representative is to keep your workforce employed. And that's like I said, I, I, would, I would say that's my greatest accomplishment and Harvard's greatest accomplishment. You know what, I'll, I'll second that. That's part of the best part about this gig is going around the world, meeting some incredibly talented people that are drawn to the, the embassy construction program. And in fact, 
uh, Dakar, Senegal, uh, uh, in West Africa, when we started the project, there were grave misgivings. How can this be maintained, um, you know, in this part of the world? And I'm happy to say it's it's extremely well maintained at this point, thanks in part to a lot of the Beale Harbor uh, staff that were trained by Beale Harbor, and then they came over to the embassy and are still working there. So it's a, it's really a showcase uh, maintenance uh, uh, effort there as well. Yeah, and honestly, the workforce is is amazing. You know, mo most people get to see the ribbon cutting and the and the beautiful pictures of it, but what goes on from day one on an embassy is absolutely phenomenal. The, the hard work yeah. that goes into it from all the local workers, um, training them, safety, all, all the above. Yeah, I, I concur. I know design, and I'm not besmirching our, our design colleagues at all, but design um, you know, gets a lot of headlines and gets a, a, a lot of visibility, but really the, the knuckles and the dirt work to get these projects done is, uh, uh, tremendous amount of effort and uh, yeah I agree so let me ask you Chuck what what are some of the biggest career challenges that you've overcome and how, how did you overcome those Ooh, I would say you know once again COVID right now is, is a big one I, I guess obviously when it first hit in in March of 2000 we or excuse me 2020 we got together with with the management of OBO and we came up with a plan. And I know the other contractors did the same thing to keep the program alive. And, and had that not happened, the collaborative effort between OBO and the, and the contractors to keep our workforce you know, mobile ready, if you will, not, I mean, not every entity that we work with abroad did the same thing. And there's challenges that we're facing now trying to keep workforce and um, we're losing them. But in the OBO world, it was it was a great collaborative effort. So that's really was a was a fun, phenomenal achievement by, by all parties. Uh, you know, and I'll, I'll agree with you. COVID is uh, without question our uh, one of the biggest challenges faced by uh, uh, OBO, particularly in construction. I believe we had about 60 major projects worldwide and at one point 50 six of them were suspended yeah. at yeah. one point. Uh, so that's as big of a catastrophe as you can get. So that's 2020 and we're still clawing our way out of it, but uh, we've had some major successes. And, and by the way, Chuck, you may not know this, but we peaked at uh, 860 cases about one year ago when we, wow. uh, since we started tracking them. Uh, the report that just crossed my desk has 15 active cases worldwide. Yeah, so, that, that's phenomenal. I, I know we ourselves and, and a, a few of the other contractors, we, we had employees in camp environments and those were extremely challenging. Um, you know, I take my hat off to the government for getting out there, helping our folks get vaccines. Um, it, it went a long way. So uh, like I said, I'm just, I'm grateful right now. And you know, the, if, if you look at the pure definition of challenge, it's probably international construction. We face, I mean, you could go through a plethora of of things and say, well, this is a challenge, that's a challenge. But every single area that you hit in international construction is a challenge. So that's what we do for a living. It's great. Yeah, agree, agree. So, so uh, that's a great segue to the next question. So, what what inspires you, Chuck? We know this is hard work. Um, as I sometimes say, not to besmirch the fine people who build WalMarts, but I've been in a Walmart and they look easier to build than what we do. Uh, so what, what inspires you? What keeps you going in this, in this work? It, it, honestly, it's quite easy for me. The, what inspires me more than anything are the workers on our projects. You know, you, you go into some of the, well, you mentioned Senegal. I mean, you go into some of these areas where people we hire, they, they show up to the fence looking for a job. They don't have shoes. You know, they, a lot of our workers, they come to work, they have to get up two or three hours before their shift starts and they're working 10 hours a day, six days a week. They either take a bus or ride a motorcycle or sometimes have to walk just to get to the job site. And then they turn around, they do the same thing and go home only to sleep on a floor, you know, that, that's made of mud with a tin, tin roof. So that, that's what inspires me is keeping the company alive so that we can give opportunities to those people and then they pay it forward as it goes. So it's a, it's to me, it's the greatest inspiration of all are the workers themselves and what they bring to the table. 
Yeah, I, I agree with you. Obviously, we're building these embassies to have a permanent uh, diplomatic presence overseas. But while we're building it, we encounter all these motivated uh, 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 people who come from sometimes um, uh, disadvantaged backgrounds and uh, and they really thrive in our program when they come to work with us overseas. So I agree with you. That is that is the best part about this gig. Yeah, no doubt. And there's some amazing individuals out there on all sides, OBO side, the contractor side. Um, like, like I said, I throw a shout out to the other contractors in our contracting community. It's it's a tough business and, and OBO is the same way. You you guys move people around from country to country and it's just a the the whole process of what goes on building embassies is a great story that needs to continue to uh, go on and obviously getting people out of harm's way is the, the biggest goal but the other things that go along with it are the hidden the hidden secrets and the hidden real successes of an embassy yeah, i agree uh, and we are working on a program uh, it's not ready for prime time, but we are looking at our history and going, you know, there's there's some stories here that, that need to be retained and told. And so at some point, we may be reaching out to our contractors uh, who've been with us on these journeys. Um, uh, but that's for the future. So for today, Chuck, I thank you for your time. I think uh, uh, this is great and uh, uh, look forward to working with you in the future and seeing you in the future. You as well, Chris. Yeah. Thanks again. And, and thanks to... Uh... Thanks to everybody for all their hard work. Appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Take 5 Friday. We hope you'll join us again next week for a conversation with OVO's Managing Director for Program Development, Coordination, and Support, Angel Dizon, and Marlon Blackwell, Founder and Principal at Marlon Blackwell Architects. See you then.